Hey there, it's Raj from 3CB Performance. Emerging Orlando Magic win Jonathan Isaac injured his left knee on New Year's Day against the Wizards, with the injury later diagnosed as a posterior lateral corner PLC injury and medial bone contusion. In this video, I'll explain the injury, Isaac's return timeline, and if it'll impact his career moving forward. As Isaac planted his left leg on this drive, his left knee significantly bowed outwards, known as knee varus, and pushed backwards into what's called hyperextension. This combination force specifically gaps and stresses the lateral outer and posterior back part of the knee, known as the posterior lateral corner. PLC. This corner is extremely rich in anatomy, including three major static stabilizers, the lateral collateral ligament, LCL, popliteus tendon, PLT, and popliteofibular ligament. Four major dynamic structures, the biceps femoris hamstring muscle, popliteus muscle, iliotobial band, ITB, and lateral outer head of the gastrocnemius, superficial calf muscle, and numerous smaller ligaments and stabilizing structures as well. A PLC injury involves damage to any of this anatomy and roughly 72% of the time also involves concomitant damage to either the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, or more commonly, the posterior cruciate ligament, PCL. However, according to Orlando Magic President of Basketball Operations, Jeff Weltman, Isaac suffered no damage to the ACL, PCL, or medial collateral ligament, MCL. This unique injury is often referred to as a quote, isolated PLC injury, but that's a bit confusing considering the PLC has so much anatomy in and of itself with lots of variability in terms of what was injured. Based on this information, the injury is likely a low to mid-grade PLC injury without any full tears or instability in the knee. Additionally, Isaac has been diagnosed with a quote, medial bone contusion, aka bone bruise. During acute knee varus force injuries, the two bones that make up the knee, the femur, thigh bone, and tibia, shin bone, can actually touch together on the medial inner aspect, resulting in tiny micro fractures on the surface of the bone with subsequent buildup of blood and edema. The team announced that Isaac will be reevaluated in 8 to 10 weeks. He'll likely spend around the first four weeks in a knee brace that's locked in extension to allow for healing, and week five and onwards undergoing physio. The physio process will work on eliminating pain, restoring normal knee range of motion, gradual progressive strengthening, neuromuscular and postural control, overall fitness, and reducing side-to-side -side asymmetry, which the research shows is a key indicator of recovery and injury risk. If rehab goes well, he'd be cleared at the reevaluation for return to higher intensity activities and return to play protocols. If he isn't cleared, the next step depends on the why. If the medial bone contusion, bone bruise, is the major issue, then he'll continue in the physio process. The return timeline on knee bone contusions are extremely variable. For example, on the shorter end of the spectrum, Andre Iguodala returned from one in roughly two weeks during the 2018 playoffs, and on the other end of the spectrum, Robert Covington missed nearly four months last season. If upon reevaluation, Isaac is primarily limited by the PLC injury, then surgery is a distinct possibility, which the team has publicly acknowledged. All in all, the key inflection point will be around the eight week mark. At that point, if Isaac is responding very well to rehab, he could be back in early to mid March, but if he doesn't and needs surgery on the PLC injury, he may not be cleared until training camp next season.
Regardless of timeline, the very good news is that Isaac, with appropriate rehab and ongoing strength and conditioning, very likely won't have long-lasting effects from the injury because bone contusions, albeit quite painful, typically have no long-lasting effects and because his PLC injury was relatively mild without any ACL, PCL, or MCL involvement. He'll likely have soreness and some discomfort in the knee in the medium term, along with having to overcome kinesiophobia, fear of movement, and re-injury, but those are inherent after any knee injury. In the end, Isaac came out quite fortunate, as this could have been far worse. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. My goal is to provide you with in-depth, evidence-based, narrative-free analysis. You can always find me on IG and Twitter at 3CB Performance. Make sure to sub to the channel and follow along on all social media for the latest updates. 3CB out.